Breaking bumps are savage little beasties that can turn even the smoothest of trails into absolute bone shakers. No trail is safe from these things forming. From nice smooth trail center blue runs to absolute savage black runs. So how do you tackle these things? I thought what better place to come and have a go at them than here, Canazai in Italy, home to round one and two of the EWS this year. Well, and we're on stage three, well and truly churned up. So let's have a little look. Breaking bumps form generally before, during and after turns and that's because it's an area where the most hard braking happens. People will drag their brakes coming into a turn and during it and what that does is that really churns up the ground. So when a back brake locks up, it will drag the ground with it, just churning it over like a washing machine if you like and it will create these big holes, kind of like what you can see below me here. As this happens more and more over time, riders will tend to drag their brakes even more because the ground gets rougher. So it's a vicious circle of braking bumps just even getting deeper or a higher frequency. The frequency of the bumps can change too, from small high frequency bumps to really big deep cupped out bumps you might see on corners. And that can change due to the speed, the ferocity of the braking that you're doing on that section can really alter sort of how the ground's made up and churn it up. How do we tackle braking bumps then? Well, the best way to tackle braking bumps is to avoid them completely. And that can be done with line choice. So let's break down this corner here and look at what the best way of tackling it is and trying to find the smoothest way around it. With this turn here then, we've got three lines. We've got the main line through the braking bumps. Let's take a look at how that goes. What about if you want to go below the braking bumps, a low line and then squaring out the turn at the end? Let's see how that goes. Finally, a high line, avoiding those braking bumps. Let's see what the high line looks like. What was the best line there then? Well, three very different lines all on the same corner. For me, straight through the middle, through those braking bumps, if you did an entire course of that, you'd be so tired and rattled by the end of it. That's not the one. The high line, it kind of was like a high to low almost. So you kind of went high, I'd picked up the front and then dropped into the turn. That worked quite well, but it was still quite sketchy because the, the entrance to the turn was so steep. For me, it's all about the low line here. You skip those braking bumps completely. You carry a good bit of speed through into the next turn and you're off. You've got to think it's not just one turn. When you do this over a lot of different turns, it can be real battering on your body. Let's talk body position when tackling braking bumps, as there's a few things to remember when getting bounced about. First up, dropping your heels. What this is going to do is put more weight into the backs of your feet and also more pressure through your legs. So when the forces of the braking bumps are coming up through the bike and therefore up through your body, you're able to absorb that impact more. It also stops your feet from getting bounced about on the pedals as much because you're putting all your body weight directly into them, almost counteracting the force that's coming back at you from the ground. Looking up and looking ahead when about to tackle braking bumps is really important because like I've said, it can help you change or choose your line of the section that's coming up but also help you judge the ferocity of the bumps that are there, therefore enabling you to prepare, if you like, for what's about to happen. It's just generally good practice as well. Keeping a good form on the bike by using your arms and legs to hold a solid position is key. Your limbs are gonna act like extra suspension, so the longer you can maintain that good form, the quicker and easier you'll be able to tackle the rough stuff aim to have a slight bend in both arms and legs. They should never be fully locked out and neither too floppy, as that's when errors can start occurring. Let's talk bike setup then for braking bumps. There's nothing really specific you can do to tackle the bumps themselves, but there are maybe a few adjustments you can make to your setup already to try and improve comfort and tracking a bit. First up, it's suspension. Now what I would do here, you don't need to make too many tweaks, but potentially dropping the pressures a little lower can help absorb that initial hit. 
sort of tracking better through the ground. The same with the rebound, you could almost speed that up only ever so slightly. What that's gonna do is gonna allow the shock to rebound ever so slightly quicker to be able to take the hit of the next bump, especially if they're real high frequencies. You don't want that shock just packing down the more hits it takes. It's just gonna, every hit, just compress, compress, compress and not have enough time to rebound. When you are tweaking the rebound on that suspension though, make sure you don't go too fast because you don't want it feeling like an absolute pogo stick because it's returning so quickly between the bumps. It's actually making it worse. It's, it's exacerbating the problem and you definitely don't want that. If you ride a lot of park, then think about brake lever position. Now, normally you might run your levers a little bit steeper. Park's notorious for braking bumps, so look at bringing those brake levers up ever so slightly, because it's majority downhill. You can afford to run a slightly flatter lever. This is gonna alleviate any arm pump that you're gonna get. Braking bumps cause you to grip on really tight, obviously just, ah! That's exactly how I do brake pumps anyway. Now what that does, that's just tensioning all the way up through your forearms and things. Rolling the brake levers back a little bit, especially on steeper terrain, is gonna help you sort of loosen your grip and be a bit more fluid on your riding. Another thing you can do with your brake levers is how far in you position them from the grip. You want the end of the brake lever, so almost the hook like you can see on my brake lever here, to sit nicely with your index finger. That way you get the most leverage and control on the brakes, the most power you can put through them. And it's gonna help modulate that power through the turns. There's nothing worse than locking up the back wheel through the brake and bumps and making things even bumpier as well. And then finally, grips. With your grips, a good soft compound is gonna help absorb a few of the smaller vibrations that you will get through the hands and arms. Again, just making your life a little bit easier. Definitely something worth thinking about if you are smashing those park laps. Do you know what? That's it for today then on Breaking Bumps. I've had my eyeballs rattled out of their sockets. So do you know what? I'm going to drop in and head on home. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Happy riding. I'll see you.